Wow. And what, you know, what we're going to be able to do, and you'll hear Anne's ultimate complaint. And the question is, why would they care? This is my, the other question to people who don't like Sarah Palin. Why do you care if she gets in or not? You don't like her, so what? Don't look. Don't watch. And, and spend the energy that is being spent on going after Palin in building up your candidate. But here's their problem. As long as Sarah Palin's around, there is a reminder about what their candidate is not or will not have. And you can't artificially create what happens with Palin. Now, what is it that suddenly has generated this frenzy of now attacks on Sarah Palin supporters? And, of course, combined with attacks on Tea Partiers in general, who are Sarah Palin supporters. Well, something happened uh, through Iowa and New Hampshire, didn't it? What are the clips that people are seeing? It's clips of this woman giving a policy speech, too, but being interrupted by chanting and uh, and uh, uh, shouts for her to run for office. And the establishment knows, people like Laura and Ann know, that that's not a, a construct. Yeah, we know by now, what, you know, what we saw with Obama, what's false. And even look, the frenzy and hysteria with him are false. And uh, you've got, uh, it, you know, people say, oh, it's the same thing as with Obama. Not quite. Uh, with Obama, people were wanting, uh, he was not giving them any specific points. With them, it was hope and change and anybody but, but Bush and, and uh, maybe we're a bunch of racists, so let's prove we're not and elect the black guy for some people. Now, that's the other conditioning that apparently has worked very well from the left to the right are these conservatives who have been slobbering all over themselves because somehow it's the only way to prove a negative for them. To somehow prove that they're not racist or prove something else. Well, now you guys know how successful the left has been. To overcome that worry is key. And, and Tea Party has, you know what's overcome your worry about being called a name is your worry about being the generation that lost America in the United States. That's your worry. So first perspective, what Ann Coulter and Laura Ingram think probably is very important to their families and friends. It doesn't matter what they think. What Eric Erickson, you know, these are people, look, being glib on television is easier than governing. <laughs> and writing about what other people do, which is what bloggers do, uh, does not make you someone who uh, is going to be taken seriously by standing up on your diaper box screaming, enough. Just isn't. Ann Coulter in this complains about the supporters, the, uh, the Sarah Palin supporters, that, that conservatives don't want to go after Sarah Palin because of what her supporters will do. Let me just remind you what both Laura Ingram and, and Ann Coulter and, and myself and other conservative women in particular go through every day. It's kind of amusing to hear Ann say that because I know Ann to be, uh, she, what she deals with every day is extraordinary. And you know what she takes in being a, a, an attractive, smart, conservative woman. Same with, with Laura Ingram. They take it on the chin every day. They get hate mail. They, they get, there's campaigns against them. I don't think Ann, Ann's uh, column will run in any newspapers because newspapers are afraid because they're attacked. Ann Coulter is not. She knows what it's like to be attacked. So it's part of the, the job description with what we do. This is what she does. She writes things and says things that provoke people. She believes them. But she knows she's not going at not going after Sarah Palin because she's afraid of emails. And come on. Everyone on the conservative movement who is uh, in a position of commentary gets emails. And there's that thing called blocking. And on Twitter, you can block. And on Facebook, you can block. And then you, you can have a, a mass delete. You know, conservative women in particular are not soft touches. And so there's a few things in this conversation you're going to hear, which is unfortunate that there's that, that decision to go after Sarah Palin supporters on a, a weak argument from two women uh, with the, I think the conversation in general, look, they're political women. So keep in mind also this isn't personal. 
with Sarah Palin, very much it is. But when, you're, when they're talking about kind of the unnamed or faced uh, Sarah Palin supporters, maybe they're talking about me. I don't think they're talking about me personally, but, you know, I don't know who, who they're – they're just realizing, and this is, again, the sad thing about the – apparently the conservative movement. They have never seen enthusiasm for a candidate. They've never seen passion and optimism. They've never seen a section of their community be committed to someone. Well, normally, I just watched good conservatives walk around with barf bags because you had been told that you needed to be throwing up and vomiting over your choices because that was the only way to have an electable candidate. How well has that worked out for you? Electability. Oh, for President Barack Hussein Obama, it worked out really well. Here is the segment. And uh, keep those things in mind. This is politics. It's not personal. They're, I believe, desperate because they realize she's getting in. The attacks now on you, and it's a very kind of, look, I have some very choice things to say about the Obamas and other people. But even with all of my concerns about Michelle Bachman, I have never said the smack about her supporters. With all of my concerns about all the other candidates, oh, I'll talk uh, the, the smacky talk about them. You will never hear me talk in the smack about people. Look, I know what you guys have been through for generations from the left because I was in there doing it to you. I now hope to God to pull you out of that. That as I keep saying, and I guess Ann and, and Laura maybe don't believe this. They, 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 they want to get some, we all want the best candidate to get into the White House. Their strategy has failed up until now. Their strategy, if they want the same strategy applied again as it was applied in 2008. You know what that's going to get us? President Barack Hussein Obama. Well, here it is. Look, uh, if you haven't listened to it because you didn't want to, it, it's, you'll hear that it's not as bad as, you know, what you're seeing on the Twitter and stuff. And you can make your own judgment. But with this perspective that Anne and Laura and others, maybe, what, three or four people, um, are not anybody's b- boss. They're not the boss of you. And what they think is pretty clear. And we're getting the results of what the conservative elite talking class and writing class and thinking class have gotten us. Nothing. Worse than nothing. Uh, A mess. Yeah, here it is. And you'll judge for yourself. And look, I would say also, when it comes to energy, be proud. Be proud now that there's a realization that you are key to Sarah Palin's success and that the images of this weekend in Iowa and New Hampshire have panicked people. What does Mitt Romney get at a Tea Party event? He brings his own supporters and gets a guy dressed as Flipper, The dolphin in the front row with how Mitt flips. I can't wait. Rick Perry says he's going to be at the debate tonight. I can't wait, just like with Michelle Bachman, for people to get to know him. We already got to know him a little bit when he declined to condemn Hoffa's remarks. Yeah, uh, you know, they want Palin out before people get to know everybody else. Well, he's going to be there tonight, and I say, thank goodness. Thank goodness, you guys, because look, we know that an image can be very different than the real thing. If there's anybody we know, heart and soul, it's Sarah Palin. You might not like what you see, but you know what you're getting. I can't wait for people to get to know Rick Perry. Here is uh, that segment. Palin still has not thrown her hat into the ring. And has that train already left the station anyway? Well, according to a Fox News poll... 74% of Americans don't want Palin to run in 2012. 20% think she should run. So what exactly is Sarah Palin? Now, now, this is just a reminder also. Here is somebody who supposedly, according to the polls, which of course are meant for strippers and cross-country skiers, uh, who is irrelevant and and, and, and shouldn't be getting in, and, and they are agreeing that she probably isn't getting in and shouldn't run, and you look at the polls and you wouldn't run. And yet, they're doing a segment on it. I'm playing it here on my show, and everybody's talking about it. 
You know, it, when you, you just consider the contradiction of the premise itself, and you start uh, that way. Up to at this point, joining us now from New York, Ann Coulter, author of the big bestseller, Demonic, How the Liberal Mob is Endangering America. And Ann, uh, this has been a long tease with Sarah Palin. <laughs> and at some point, that tease, I guess, has got to mm. deliver or just go away. What's going to happen here? Uh, maybe not. Newt Gingrich carried it on for about 15 years. and. <laughs> I kind of think that might be what we're getting here, um, largely because of the polls. I mean, you, you just showed the Fox News poll. Gallup took a poll, um, I don't know, five, six months ago, showing that not quite as high as 74 percent, but 65 percent said that they would never, definitely, mm -hmm. positively, ever mm -hmm. vote for Sarah Palin. Now, you know, anyone who's going to run for president is going to be doing his own polling, or in this case, her own and poll. And let me, for, for what's not shared, and I think Ann should know this, is President Reagan at one point was 25 points behind Jimmy Carter. Every single poll, you know, had the, her, look, Anne's my age. She remembers Carter and Reagan. And the laughter, there's a recording of Carter laughing hysterically at the nomination of Ronald Reagan. 25 points behind Jimmy Carter. Yeah, keep that in mind. Um, and so it doesn't seem it doesn't seem likely that with those numbers she would run. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter, I might add, that, oh, it's the media's fault and they attacked her and they saw her as a threat, all of which I believe is true. Um, n nonetheless, yet and still, it has worked. And most Americans don't want Sarah Palin for president. Uh, but she hey, see, this is a, the same Ann Coulter who would rightly dismiss polls that say the majority of Americans don't like her. And don't want her to write another book. And don't want to see her on television. You know, you polls are collections of between about 500 to 1,000 people. Some are larger, like the hot air poll is an example. What is it? Normally they get tens of thousands of people. But these polls that are conducted, and she knows as well how polls are done and how they're skewed and who they talk with. But they do give a convenient footing for people who want to be able to refer to something. You know, maybe you'll have a poll of 900 people, and those, a, a percentage of those 900 people don't like Sarah Palin. It depends on who they're calling and how they're asking the question. Uh, but then to just say and extrapolate, when you hear an extrapolation that, oh, well, yeah, this is statistics. You know, there's curves and such, and one can argue that that's what's going on. The problem is, of course, is that this is probably one of the most biased, one of the most emotional election seasons. And people, these are existential fights now for people. And if there was ever a time that you couldn't believe polls, this would be the time. And yet it serves a convenient box to stand on uh, when you need something to stand on. She's become sort of the Obama of the Tea Party. She's just the one to a certain segment of right-wingers and the tiniest criticism of her. Um, I think many of your viewers may not know this. The tiny, no, one, no conservative on TV will criticize Palin because they don't want to deal with the hate mail. Um, you know, uh, is that why we never hear any criticism of Palin? I, I'm sorry. Has, have, has the criticism... Would somebody point me to the section of the interweb tubes and television and radio and and newspapers where the, where the criticism of Sarah Palin has stopped? Has has Ann not been criticizing Sarah Palin for six months? I mean, if she could get her arms around Chris Christie, she'd do it. You know, this is uh, Ann has been this snarky about Sarah Palin uh, since she's uh, uh, what last year she named her what conservative of the year or something. And then I don't know what happens. Maybe that's my own naivete. Uh, Anne has felt very comfortable criticizing Sarah Palin for at least six months.